Frequency separation is a relatively simple procedure and it has a lot of nuances. Today we are going to be focusing on image bit depth. In photography, we have generally a lot of terms always be passed around. 16-bit image, 8-bit image, JPEG, RAW, compressed, uncompressed, and this is a lot of information. And on YouTube, we find a lot of tutorials on how to edit an image, but no tutorial really focuses on how to edit a specific type of image. And I find this information very important because watching a tutorial on how to edit a 16-bit image when you are working with an 8-bit image is not as beneficial to you as you might think. And here are the reasons why. An 8-bit image generally stores about 16.7 million colors, whereas a 16-bit image stores about 200 trillion colors. And so you would see that there's an exponential difference between these two. And this plays a significant role when you're editing because trying to over-reclaim highlights in an 8-bit image would cause banding, whereas in a 16-bit image, it might not even be noticeable at all. And so the editing procedures for these two different types of images are important. And this will boil down to the conversation of should you shoot in RAW or JPEG? Because most JPEGs are 8-bit images and most RAW are 16-bit images. And so is this extra information important for you? More information is always very beneficial, especially when you're editing. But not everybody has the luxury of choice. What I mean by this is not all cameras can shoot RAW photos. Not everybody can shoot RAW images. Not everybody knows the right settings for RAW images. Most people are very comfortable with JPEG images. But this should not limit your editing choices or it should not limit your editing capacity. And so in this video, I'm going to break down frequency separation for 8-bit and 16-bit images. And this way, you're going to understand how to approach any scenario if you're given an 8-bit image or a 16-bit image. So without wasting more time, let's get straight into editing. So the first question would obviously be, how do you know the image you're working with? Or how do you know the image bit depth? And this is quite easy to check. Whenever you open an image in the camera raw filter, you should be able to see it directly down here. You can see here, I have a 16 bit image and the size of the image. And clicking on this one time should take you to the preference page. And you can see here, we are working in the 16 bit channel. Obviously you, or you can also change to the eight bit channel. But one important thing to note is that changing to the eight bit channel means that you're losing a significant amount of information that was already available on the image. As I said, 8-bit images are generally JPEG. And so this is like converting your raw image to a JPEG before editing. I would not advise for you to do this. And so you always leave it in 16-bit if you're working with a 16-bit image. However, you might think that changing to a 16-bit channel when you're using an 8-bit image will provide you maybe an extra advantage, but it is absolutely useless. It doesn't provide any given advantage since you don't double information that does not exist. And so it provides no benefit to you and it's just a waste of your time. So if you're working with a 16-bit image, use the 16-bit channel. And if it's an 8-bit image, use the 8-bit channel. And all this being said, you can apply whatever settings you use. One thing I would advise to note when working in the camera raw filter, especially with JPEGs, if you're watching a tutorial and the person is working with a raw image, Whatever value the person uses, try to half that value before you apply it to your image. It might look good at the moment you're applying it, but trust me, when you export it, you would see how damaged your image looks because it is not the same size. It's not the same quality and different cameras produce different results. And so you might have a lot of banding, a lot of distortion because you applied too many edits. And so let's go now to frequency separation and let's see what really makes these two types of images different. separation is quite similar for both cases, but there are a few differences that I would like you to note. For example, we generally create two copies of the background layer. And so you can just drag and drop or you can use control J. And so we have a copy. This is our color layer. And this is our texture layer. So this is colors and textures. We make the texture layer invisible and then we apply a filter. So we're going to use a Gaussian blur. And for this image in particular, I have my default Gaussian blur set to five because I feel it's just enough where you cannot really see the features in the face, but you can still tell that it's a person. And so for me, this is a reasonable Gaussian blur. Normally, if you're working with an 8-bit image, I would advise you to take lower values for the Gaussian blur because when applying the lasso tool or the mixer brush tool, 
you would have to multiply this value by three times its normal or its original value. And this is very bad in the case where you take, let's say, high values of 40 or 60, and then your image comes out very flat and you would have to do a lot of dodge and burning to try to reintroduce all these features again. But then if the image is a lower quality image, dodge and burn would not save that image. It would completely ruin the image and you end up with a lot of banding. So this is okay for me right now. And on our texture layers, we're going to apply the image. So this is what I want you to note with a 16 bit image, the colors here, we are subtracting the color layer because we created a color layer, remember colors and the channel will always remain RGB. I will click on the invert option here and my blending mode is going to be add and not subtract. And so this is how you work with 16 bit images or generally raw images, it must not be 16 bit, but raw images in general. And once you do this, you can change your blending mode to linear light and you're ready for frequency separation. So you simply just create a group by group selecting this tool. And this is frequency separation. And so you can now come to your color layer and work with the mixer brush. Now, when working with 16 bit images, this is the default settings I use. I use a wetness of nine, load of 75%, a mix of 90% and a flow of 100. So these are the default settings, and I always set this to a default as a clean brush. So, and the size of your brush depends generally on you and how you feel like using it. And this is what makes you ready for frequency separation. When you're done with the mixer brush, you can use the lasso tool. And same thing, you select certain parts, you highlight certain parts. And let me pull this closer. And so, for example, if I'm to apply a Gaussian blur here again, Remember my initial value was five. Now I have to up this value by three. And so roughly a value of 16. And you would see what it does to the face already. If you go too high, you see that it really starts damaging the image. And so that's why it's important to not take extremely high values or extravagant values. So for me, a value of 16 still retains enough information and gives me almost that perfect skin that I like to have in most of my images. And this is where the difference comes in. Now, let me show you for an 8-bit image. Now, this is an 8-bit image. And as you can see from the top right corner here, it's an 8-bit image. So this is where it's indicated this 8 with the star indicates 8-bit image. In contrast to the other image had 16 with a star. And so the frequency separation procedure is still relatively the same. Control J, create two layers. This is our color layer. Wait. It's pretty split. And so you create your color layer and your texture layer. And so it's still the same thing. Uh, on the color layer, you apply a blur. I go to Gaussian blur. As I said, with 8-bit images, you want to use very low values. So for example, I'm trying to focus on her face here. And so you see that a value of 3.9 is already too much. And with 8-bit images, you really have to try not to use as much as you would use for a 16-bit image because it might generally end up ruining the image. And so this is now what I'm going to use. I'm going to use a value of 3. And for the texture layer, I'm going to apply image. And this is where the difference comes right now. So we are going to subtract the color layers. And so we're going to come here and we're going to use subtract. We're not going to invert anything. We're going to keep a scale of one and an offset of 128. And so this is generally the difference when arranging your basic settings for frequency separation. And when you do this, you can change your blend mode again to linear light. And you can now create a group. Frequency separation. Or you can name it whatever you want to name it, but the process does not change. And coming now to the color layer, for my mixer brush, these are the settings I use when working with 8-bit images. A wetness of 5%, a load of 50%, a mix of 80%, because the image does not have as much information. And so if you overload this image with extra information, it's going to cause a lot of banding. You, can, you should always set your 
default here to a clean brush and have this option checked so that it does not it always renews the brush so and you can choose whatever brush size you like working with and the same thing when you're working with your lasso tool any spot where you feel like you have to shape out or apply a blur effect to it when doing this and you apply your filter for example if i want to apply a gaussian blur now three times or three times this value give me a value of roughly about nine and so it does not do as much damage to my image of course this image is a bit hazy but the principle behind it is still the same and so it's very important because some people might try working with an 8-bit image in a 16-bit channel thinking it provides certain advantages but it really doesn't work with the image the way it is and just do not apply so heavy edits to jpegs as you would to raw images if you want to do a lot of editing shoot in raw but if you want to do just slight touches then jpegs are perfectly fine for this jpegs are very good and there's a lot of professional photographers out there who work only with jpeg in many scenarios so don't feel worried about it as i said the best option that you can have is the option your camera provides not everybody has the luxury of choice and you should not feel penalized if you do not have this option it is very normal work with what you have and see how you can achieve the best possible results for what you have i know most people will not make it to this part of the video but this is just something i feel like i have to say and it's a very big thank you when i started this channel my aim was to get maybe 100 subscribers by the end of the year and just a few months in and we are well over 500 and counting and that really means that many people are interested in what i am releasing and in the information that i am putting out there it makes me happy that i'm able to be of assistance to anyone and if the information i can provide can help you realize your dream then i feel more fulfilled and i feel more happy i really don't have the words to say thank you but for just sharing the video for clicking on the video for leaving a comment for liking the video for anything that you've done for even just coming across this channel i want to say a big thank you and we're only going to keep getting better there is also a lot of constructive criticism i received and i really appreciate the positive and negative feedback too it helps us to be able to know how to improve and what we have to improve and i just want to say thank you it, it really works my heart till the next time I'll always keep on putting out information or putting out videos. Just leave a comment. If you would like me to do a video on a specific subject or a topic, then let me know in the comment section. And it's just going to keep on going better and bigger from here on. So thank you and have a great day.